episode of Jim's Love and Garden. So unfortunately I had to cut the uh, the tour short um, on the last video because I just basically ran out of time. I don't like the videos going over 36 minutes because, I don't know, they don't seem to upload to YouTube very well. But uh, anyway, so I think we were about here at the time there was um, there was the um, spinach still here, but obviously that's all been dug out now. And uh, so moving from there, obviously we've got the potatoes here. I've been sort of weeding these today as you can see this one's pretty well clear now still got a few weeds sort of around here to sort out but uh, I've made a start on weeding the potatoes anyway so uh, that's potatoes the sunflowers I don't know if I remember I don't remember if I mentioned these in the in the start of the last one but anyway the the sunflowers are doing really well and um, I've still got ants coming from somewhere I don't know quite where I've seen a few ants over here but uh, there's the the row of sunflowers as you can see going along and um, these spalier trees which I showed you in the last video um, I'm not quite sure what's going on with these um, uh, raspberries here but what I'm going to do is move some of these from here to here to uh, just to fill that up a little bit um, obviously I need to do a little bit more weeding down here as well the, uh, the strawberries uh, I've picked quite a few strawberries this week so they're doing reasonably well um, and I think it's uh, it's, it's a little bit damp at the minute, so I've, uh, I've put a few slug pallets down because um, I've noticed some of the, um, a few of the strawberries that I've picked um, are a little bit uh, sort of slug damaged. So um, I've, I've put a few slug pallets down just to kind of sort of knock them over. Um, the raspberries are slowly coming, as you can see there's a few here um, that are starting to come. The um, um, asparagus is... Uh, doing really well. It's getting a little bit top heavy at the minute so what I might need to do is just put a cane along there just to sort of tie him back just to hold him because I think the winds that we've had over the past couple of weeks have sort of taken the toll a little bit. They're a bit uh, sort of battered about so what I'm going to do is just make a bit of a bamboo um, sort of framework. Um, more sort of uh, permanently I'm, I'm going to make a metal framework there um, just to hold the um, asparagus up a little bit but uh, anyway that's the asparagus and the strawberries and I think pretty much we're back to where we were um, at the top corner so that's the allotment as it is this week okay so this is where the spinach used to be and as you can see what I'm doing at the moment is I've fetched all the spinach out and uh, what I'm doing is I'm just digging in about three barrows full of um, chicken manure. Now this has come straight out of the uh, the nest but it's not been in there that long so it's not that strong. I'm more after the uh, the straw than anything which is going to hold the moisture in the ground. Now I'm just turning that into the ground and obviously digging the ground whilst I'm at it because this is where the, as I say, this is where the spinach was so it's had no muck this year and obviously what I'm going to be doing here is planting in the, um, the courgette plants and stuff like that. So uh, I'm just preparing the ground at the minute so what I'll do is I'll finish digging all of that in and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished when I start to put in the plants. Okay so there's the all the ground dug and uh, what's going in here are the courgettes. Now I've got eight courgette plants so what I've done is I've just placed them on the ground roughly where they need to go and as you can see the ground level's quite high obviously because the ground's not compacted. Now ideally what I would do is dig the ground like I've done today and then leave it for a week or so just to settle down again. So um, but unfortunately I need to get these courgettes in as soon as possible because the, basically they should have gone in a week or so ago if not more. So I'm going to be planting them today. So what I'm going to do is just where each of the, uh, each of the uh, courgettes is going to go, what I'm going to do is just really give it another quick dig with the spade just to try and compact the ground down a bit further and um, plant them in then give them a really good water. Then hopefully the ground around them won't sort of collapse too much over the next few weeks. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just show you me doing that now. Okay, so this is where the courgette plant's going to go, about here. 
So what I'm just going to do is just basically give it a good sort of dig around with the spade. Now all I want to do basically is just make sure that the ground is, is as collapsed as possible. So I'm just sort of going through and trying to break up the big lumps. So it uh, breaks, breaks down and sort of goes in. Now with a courgette plant, what you want to do is give it reasonable amounts of room. Um, actually the ground's a little bit hard there. Oh, it's got a straw in there. So there's been loads of straw in here now. Courgette plants, well any of the gourd plants really, they're all quite sort of hungry plants, not only for food but also for uh, moisture. Um, now what you can do is actually make like an indention in the ground, like a bowl, uh, which I've done in the past, but in all honesty, if uh, if, it, if you have a lot of rain, they tend to get a bit flooded out, so what I've tended to do um, in recent years is um, not bother doing that, just plant them at actual ground level, then at least then you can control the water that they get in. I typically water them every night anyway. Now I'm just removing the uh, damaged leaves. Just gently pull that out. I know I'm holding the stem, but I didn't actually put any force on it. So I'm just making sure that it is at sort of ground level, like that. And I'm just gently pulling back in the soil around like that, giving it a good sort of firm down round. And what I'll do is I'll continue to do the rest of them like that. Obviously I have got sort of a, a bit of a bowl shape around them at the minute, but obviously this ground along here will sort of go down in the next um, few days anyway as it um, settles back down. And if we get a bit of rain, obviously this is all going to sort of compact back down. So that's the first courgette in. I'm just going to continue along here and put the rest in. Okay, so that's the pumpkins in. Now what I'm going to do is give them a really good watering. Now the one thing that I did want to say, um, if you've got, uh, most gourds need a reasonable amount of room. And I would say for courgettes, they're typically one of the smallest. Um, you basically need around, I'd say about two foot to be fair, um, all the way around the plant um, to give it enough room. But uh, if you've got a sort of pumpkin or um, like one of the Winterfest gourds or um, something like that, um, you're going to need a lot more room than that. I would say probably you need about potentially up to four foot sort of radius all the way around each of the plants. So that's why all of the, um, the pumpkins and that are going to go down the top end just to the side of the rhubarb. So they've got plenty of room because obviously as soon as these potato plants grow a little bit further, um, they're, they're potentially going to fall over onto these and they're going to be struggling for room. So I am going to erect a bit of a fence along here um, just to sort of hold the potato plants back a little bit so they don't sort of flop over onto the, the courgettes. Um, and, and if you are going to do that, if you've got these by the potatoes, what you need to remember is if you are going to put a fence up against the potatoes, it needs to be... Um, you need to have sort of holes in it to let the ventilation go through because what you don't want is to stop the ventilation through your uh, potatoes because obviously that will encourage damp and then that will encourage blight. So um, if you are going to put a fence up, uh, use some mesh or um, you know some wooden slatted type um, affair so it doesn't um, you know sort of stop the airflow going through the potatoes, which is another good reason why you should always keep your potatoes well weeded so you've not got. Um, sort of weeds there holding the moisture in but uh, as you can see I've done some of the potatoes today I need to sort of crack on with this bit round here but uh, anyway that's the uh, the courgettes and I'll just water those last few um, and they'll um, hopefully be okay there they are as I say these plants should have gone in a couple of weeks ago so they're looking a little bit sort of stressed if you like but uh, um, all being well they're going to be okay and uh, I'll just keep my fingers crossed now keep them watered if it doesn't rain um, and then um, leave them to it. Okay, so we're just down by the uh, the rhubarb and, and the uh, lentils and chickpeas, and basically the uh, the gourds are basically going to be going in here, um, and these go in exactly the same as the um, as the courgettes, but uh, obviously all of this got mucked and um, it's had a load of uh, wood chipping and grass cuttings and stuff, so uh, this has already been prepared. So all I need to do basically is just get the weeds out, loosen up the ground a little bit because I've been walking on it, and then just plant them in. Now I've got quite a few, so I've got three giant um, pumpkins. Which is the um, which is the pumpkin Atlantic giant? I don't know if you can see that. Um, so they're going to go in here, and I'm basically going to put a round 
Uh, I think about four foot between each plant, so the third one's going to go kind of here. Um, I'm just going to get the sort of weeds out and stuff. And then I've basically got um, I've got three um, winter fest squashes. Um, I've got some um, squash hornet, which I believe is the butternut squash. Um, so they're going to go in just along along the back there. And then these ones here are the um, are the uh, the pumpkin small sugar. So I'm going to do. I believe. Um, that these aren't particularly big so I'm kind of running out of space a little bit here so I'm putting the corn along the back there so what I'm going to do is get as many in as along here I'm going to put one up the front there and what I'm also going to do is uh, I'm going to put one or two of them at the end of this tunnel right at the end there because uh, basically I'm just running out of space so I think they'll be okay in there I don't think they're going to be too disruptive to the uh, to the broccoli and stuff so uh, I'll get on with that now Okay, so the first um, the pumpkin's going to go in here, and obviously, you know, this ground is really nice and loose. And I'm going to plant it around 18 inches away from this fence, so it'll it'll grow this way, if anything. And then, as I say, I've got all the weeds out, just lift it up a little bit, and uh, I'm just going to bob it in here. Obviously, this has been rotivated a couple of times this year, and it's had loads of muck in and that, which is well rotted down. Now, the first one's going in around three foot away from the path, so it doesn't, um, you know, sort of go onto the path if it does obviously I'll put a stick in or something like that and uh, just sort of pull it back so I'm, I'm going to put it in around sort of here as I say it's about sort of 18 inches two foot away from this fence so these things tend to trail all over the place to be honest with you um, and I'll be just having one pumpkin on each of these so what I'll do is I'll obviously pick the pumpkin that is in the right place and then uh, sort of um, you know sort of just just let one develop on each plant so that's the first one but the one tip that I would give you is everywhere where you plant um, a pumpkin plant is get a stick and put the stick just behind the plant the reason being is as soon as these things start to grow you will have no idea where the root of the plant is so you don't know where to water so what I would suggest is put a little stick right next to the plant and then as these develop and sort of go all over the place uh, you'll be able to see um, you know where the plant is and you'll be able to water the plant rather than just watering around it um, so there's a there's a reasonably good tip for you okay so there are the the gourds and I've put one of the little pumpkins in at the front here and I've put the other two little pumpkins there and then uh, I've had to kind of push it at an angle because I'm going to be walking around here to water the um, the sweet corn which is going to go there and the beans and that and then the rest of the pumpkins and gourds have gone along there and rather than put it in the tunnel what I've actually done I've never done this before I don't know if it'll work but uh, I've put the Winterfest gourds actually between the beans I don't know I honestly don't know if this is going to work um, but uh, I've kind of ran out of space to put them anywhere else so and when I had a look in the tunnel it uh, I don't think there's quite enough room in there to do it so I've bobbed them in here if it doesn't work it doesn't work um, but um, I'm not too bothered about the Winterfest gourds to be honest with you, because they're more for interest than, uh, than anything else. Obviously, the pumpkins um, which are along here, um, and the large pumpkins there, are obviously for my kids for Halloween. But uh, so they're reasonably important. But um, so that's the gourding for this year. So I'm just going to pick some of the broccoli. And this is possibly the earliest I've ever picked broccoli in my life, to be But what you want to be doing is, as you can see, this this one here is going to develop into the hopefully the next bit so I'm just taking off literally just taking it off the top there and then hopefully this one and these other little ones at the side will develop later into a second harvest so um, I'm, I'm literally just cutting it just below the um, where the florence starts it's quite surprising that now the strawberries are ready um, you can actually smell the smell the strawberries as you walk past the patch but I just wanted to give you a quick tip on um, basically picking strawberries because what you want to do is um, when you pick one, let's just find a good example. Uh, here we go. So there's this strawberry here. Uh, what a lot of people have kind of tempted to do is leave the um, this this sort of part on here, and if you pull it, what you'll do is you'll um, potentially run the risk of damaging the plant but also 
um, if you leave the, the middle part of the what was the centre part of the flower in there that'll rot um, start to go mouldy and then that'll obviously um, send other fruit mouldy so what you want to do is put your thumb through the through the stalk like that and so you remove the, the top part of the strawberry um, along with the rest of it then obviously when you get down to the kitchen just pull out that part um, you, you know ready to eat but um, and the other tip is try to get at least half of what you pick back down to the house and not just eat the lot which is sometimes what I do. <laughs> okay so I'm just putting the sweet corn in and uh, as you can see they're more than ready to go in so uh, what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm putting I've got 24 plants in total this year so what I'm going to be doing is putting um, effectively four rows of six so the last row is kind of sort of going to be a, a, around here so um, so they're going to be a, a, around 12 inches or so apart and um, so I'll, I'll just show you me putting them in now. Okay so it's quite simple putting in the, uh, the sweet corn. The one thing that I would advise you do is um, dig the ground thoroughly. Um, this, this ground here um, at the back end of last year had, there's the, uh, the root ball, um, had around uh, three or four barrows of um, wood chip put into it and that's all been sort of really dug in um, and so it's all nicely rotted down now. So as I say these these sweet corns are going in and you need to try your damnedest not to sort of, uh, there's the root ball, um, sort of try as hard as you can not to stand on the ground because what you want you want the ground to be nice and loose for sweet corn I've found. Um, you don't want it to be sort of hard and compacted in any way shape or form you want it to be so that basically the roots can get into the ground and get all the goodness. But if you do dig a load of um, uh, wood chip in or something like that, then uh, the uh, the ground will be nice, nice and loose anyway. So that's just the third one going in there. Um, and then as soon as I've got this done, what I'm going to be doing is constructing like a um, a little bit of a fence going around the sweet corn. And the reason for that is, is as it gets a little bit taller, it can get a little bit sort of uh, sort of winds. You know the wind can sort of blow it over and stuff like that. So, just to protect it from the wind, obviously I've got the I've got the fence for the uh, just here off the uh, rhubarb. So that's going to protect that side of it. So all I'm going to do is protect the the other side facing um, the wind. So this is this is protecting like the um, the west side here, and then the east side is going to be over here. So what I'll do is I'll uh, just construct a little bit of a fence there. Um, and it's to do two things really, one to protect it against the wind but also you want to keep the ground as moist as you possibly can do so that uh, you know it's not um, sort of drying out because sweet corn does like its water. Okay so that's the sweet corn in place. Um, I've just put this um, bit of corrugated plastic there with a couple of sticks. All I've done is just driven um, two canes in um, the ground and just tie them together with a cable tie at both ends, so that's sort of more than secure enough to stop the wind. Now with uh, sweet corn, obviously you always grow it in a block if you've never grown it before. You grow it in a block so it'll pollinate, so, you know, so the plants will pollinate each other. Don't try and grow it in a row because they uh, typically won't pollinate if you do that. So that's the corn in and all I'll do now is just give it a, um, a bit of water. I don't need too much water because the ground's quite wet anyway. and. Um, I'll just keep that reasonably well watered over the next few weeks until it's got itself established. And then if we do have a dry spell, you know, we'll need to give it a bit of water then. But uh, um, there's still a few plants to go up at the bottom there, um, sort of the far side there. There's, a, there's a three plants missing, but I'm just going to leave them in the greenhouse till they're a little bit bigger because they're a bit smaller than the rest. So, uh, but that's the corner for this year. Okay, just a quick update in the greenhouse. I didn't show you the hollyhocks um, in the last video. And that's what we're looking like now. So these are just about ready to um, transplant. So what I'll be doing is putting them, separating them because obviously they've germinated really well. There's two in each pot. So I'll be putting them in some um, four inch pots till they develop a little bit bigger. And then I'll be um, transferring them into probably um, a six inch pot um, to develop over this year. Then I'll, I'll leave them in there over the winter for next year. And the other thing I just quickly wanted to show you was the was the uh, the chili that I'm growing the the uh, the big gym you can see that but uh, as you can see there's a there's a flower there 
some lots of little flowers on the top here. So this is also going to get um, repotted very shortly because I think uh, I think that's probably due for being in a slightly bigger pot. I'm not going to go massively bigger, probably about an eight to nine inch pot for that. And uh, so that was just two things that uh, I hadn't shown you the other day. And I'm not sure if I showed you the broccoli, but this is also getting very close to being uh, pricked out and um, put in some. Um, you know some pots exactly like I did it earlier in the year so what I want to do um, this week obviously is clear all these um, tomatoes out here um, and these uh, lentils um, and sort of move these out of the way because this surface is going to be pretty much full with um, all the sort of plants you know all these picked out and also the, the hollyhocks and also the um, Nero kale is also pretty much ready to go out so that can also um, be put out as well amongst the other Near a council. That's just a quick sort of midweek update from the greenhouse. Okay, so I'm just putting in the sweet peas, and what I'm going to do is plant these actually on the inside of the um, on the inside of the tunnel uh, where I've got the uh, the kale. And what I'm going to do is hopefully um, I'm hoping I'm going to plant them on the inside here, and then the, they're going to go through the through the mesh and then grow up on the outside. Now, as you can see, there's a reasonable amount of sort of um, roots on these. Now, these are the variety that you saw me putting in earlier in the year, and these are called RAF. So it's a mixture of, uh, believe it or not, red, white, and blue um, color, um, flowers. And I've had these in the greenhouse, and by rights, to be honest with you, these should have gone out a few weeks ago. But with one thing and another, they haven't gone out. But what I'm going to do is just leave them leaning against the, uh, the, the sort of the mesh like that. And what I'm going to hope is that they actually grow through the um, the mesh onto the outside and uh, grow up as they did last year. If you didn't see my uh, um, video last year of the of these growing up the this same tunnel, um, basically they grew up. Um, the outside and over the top and then um, they give quite a nice scent at night. So I'm just going to plant these along the end here, along the edge, and what I'll do is I'll show you what they look like when it's finished. Okay, so I've put them all the way along. What I'm going to do now is just give them a really good soaking uh, to give them a good start. And what I'll do is most certainly make sure that these are kept nice and wet, at least for the first three or four weeks. Um, because the one thing sweet peas do need as they're developing is water. So um, as I'm watering the uh, the brassicas, I'll obviously give these a bit as well. Um, so that's the sweet peas in. Um, there's a few more plants that I've got, which I may well put along the back there. But I've gone along all the side uh, with these. Now what, I'm, what I will do is uh, just get a, a bit of string, and I'll tie these up against the... Um, um, netting so and then hopefully they'll sort of work their way through the netting um, and then sort of grow up on the outside if not they'll grow up on the inside it doesn't matter it works both ways for me to honest with you but what I'll do is I'll try to encourage them to grow through the net to the other side and then they'll go up and then they'll have um, you know they'll sort of grab on to themselves from then on. Now last year what I did use is some metal rings um, and I'll be I'll be showing you them in the next video. But basically, they're just like a small metal ring that you can get from most garden centres. Um, Aldi and uh, other sort of shops sell them as well. They're just like small rings the size of a 10p piece, and that'll go around the uh, the sweet pea plants and then round anything that you're trying to get to climb up. And uh, that's quite a nice, neat way of uh, just putting it on. Then at the end of the year, you just pull the metal rings off and um, you know take out the dead plants. So so that's the uh, the sweet peas and for this year.
So, thank you for watching this episode of Jim's Lumber Garden. If you do have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to put your um, questions in that below. And thank you to all of the support for the channel. I do appreciate your help. And I will see you on the next episode of Jim's Lumber Garden. Bye.